It's the dawn of week three for the FTC 2526 decode season, and it's time to come up with a plan for the week and set up slots to have a little more customizability. It makes iterating on these designs a little bit faster. I'm Coach Pratt, and I've been teaching robotics design for over a decade now, and I've coached FTC teams to winning national championships in the Benelux region. By the end of today's video, you should have a complete plan for what your team needs to be able to do to find success during week three for the FTC decode season. I'll go through specifics for the build team and design team, specifics on the programming team, as well as what your outreach team should be focusing on so you can make sure that you are getting yourself in the best running for those awards. So looking at our plan, let's of course start for week three on our build and design team. One of the big things right now is to continue testing some of the initial prototypes. I think one of the dangers the teams run into too early is having a design that has a little bit of initial success and then running away with that design right away. Not that it's poor practice to have something that works well, but one thing to consider is that there may be other options that exist and other things you can do quicker. So for instance, some teams will start to design uh, intakes with belts at this stage. Chains are a lot more customizable at this point. You can have a little more slack in these things. You can set up slots to have a little more customizability it makes iterating on these designs a little bit faster. Is a boot, we, boot kicker quicker at picking up an object? Is a compliant wheel quicker at picking up a different object? Is a different shore hardness affecting the ability and the grippiness that it's able to go ahead and grab all those balls? How much compression do you need on that ball to be able to pick it up? Is some sort of modifiable compression a good intake? Mill boot things around it. How much space do you actually need? Now is the time to really continue to be bad Italian chefs. Throw a bunch of spaghetti at a wall, and once it sticks, see things that are sticking and continue to iterate upon there. I don't think it's ever a bad idea to have three or four team members working on a sort of intake prototypes and just coming up with a really quick bulletproof. This is where your Go Builder, your Andy Mark, your Rev, uh, your Studica quick build channels uh, really come in handy here because it allows you to get through a lot of quick iterations and test them out. The more time you spend failing and learning from those failures, the more success you're going to have, uh, in my personal opinion, when you're working through this kind of build design phase. So is a flywheel launcher more what you're looking for? Is a catapult launcher more what you're looking for? What is leading you to that kind of initial successes? And if you haven't built a quick prototype, one of these kind of larger, more archetypes, two flywheel launchers, parallel or vertical launchers, hooded flywheel launchers, if you can set these things up in cardboard or corrugated plastic, test and see which things are working well. And also see when they take a look at what other teams are doing and what has been leading them to success as well. And think about what other avenues have not been explored. Because this is really your kind of last week to throw a bunch of things at a wall before you start risking running into bigger design challenges in the future of the season and getting in too much into your uh, build cutout. And uh, this will really help set you up for success. On the programming team, you should be able to have that programming bot set up where your robots or where your builders had that set up from last week. So of course, your main focus can be working on the actual robot itself or that quick prototype robot from your robot in three days, robot in 30 hours, 24 hours, whatever it is you had from the end of that week too. And working through on prototyping this. You can start working on some single pathing, whether you're using pager pathing or whether you're using Roadrunner, be able to set up some path units for autonomous. One of those big ones is just simply going to be able to leave that white line from the shooting zone so that you're not on top of that white line on that launch zone. So you can be able to get yourself three points with that leave because that is a big contributor to your ranking point. So that's probably one of the first things you should look at on an autonomous team And can you consistently get those three points? And can you help your other team consistently get those three points as well? Because that is a big boon. So in Roadrunner and Pager Pathing, you need to have your kind of final robot set out as you start tuning. But this is a good time to practice those tuning practices so that you know how the tuning process works so that when you do get your final robot in six or seven weeks, you'll be able to actually, or yeah, about six-ish weeks, Uh, you'll be able to have proper pathing set up. Now is also a good time to be thinking about what kind of driver automations can you put in. If you're using a flywheel-based launcher, do you have encoders tracking to be able to understand how fast the RPM of the motor needs to go and have some sort of range that when you are this far away from the target, 
this is the RPM range you should be shooting for. When you're this far away from the target, this is the RPM range you should be shooting for. And you can start setting up some of those classes to be able to create different methods for your drivers to be easier so that when your driver pushes the launch button, it spins that wheel up to the correct distance that they need, or sorry, the correct RPM that they need, and then it will not push the ball through into the launcher until the launcher is at that correct RPM. Same thing is true of a catapult launcher. Once you've pulled the catapult all the way down, it will not launch itself until it's actually already down or there is a ball that's currently inside. Uh, so you don't have any sort of false pause or things like that. Now is the good time to be thinking about how you can design those practices. It's also a good time to be designing out some flow charts for thinking about how is the actual structure and logic of my codes going to work, how are those main functions going to work, and how are my mechanisms going to work so that you can have these things more cleared and laid out. Because when you have a proper defined structure and defining it in pseudocode or flow charts, it makes it so much easier for actually designing your real robot. Moving on to the outreach team. This is a good time to do documentations. If you have not gone back and done interviews with each team member to figure out one, what their goals are, and two, how they're going to be making that plan to be able to improve this, now is the week to be able to do that. Because you have to be able to show your plan process over time for that sustained award this season. It's also a good time to start thinking about what sort of long-term outreach you can be doing to help support the first community and STEM in your local community. Reaching out to teachers. Are there after-school clubs at your school that they have access to? Are there community centers that you can have access to and they're looking for volunteers and these kind of things? Is there a club yourself that you could run at lunchtimes for a younger grade level inside of those? Are there sort of uh, meet a robot greetings you could have to be able to bring new members into your team? It's still a viable time to bring all these out uh, and it is all excellent work for your engineering portfolio. It's also a good time to start making some sort of master notes document for your engineering portfolio and running down and keeping track of what things have you doing over the season. Because when you have a 10, 12 week season, you can start to forget a lot of these things quite quickly. And being able to have that all set up makes your life a lot simpler having a some sort of master notes document that then once you have your main ideas, you can transform into some sort of nice, well-presented engineering portfolio. So overall, your main goal this week is this is really your last week looking at prototypes and thinking about what things are working, what things are not working before you start to really continue to iterate in on designs. If at this point you don't have a robot that is at least built or at least somewhat functioning, in my opinion, you're a little bit behind the ball here. So if you're, if you're feeling intimidated where to go, take those uh, starter robots from one of the four major suppliers, you know, Rev, Go Build Us, Didica, Andy Mark. Take any of those four and just start rolling with that. Take a look at my series FTC Fridays and see what other past robots are already starting to do. And then as well, at the end of the day, make sure that you are defining things within your team's means. You don't want to be shooting out above those means. If you're looking for some extra resources, I've got lots of tutorials down on my channel. Uh, and if you want some more kind of behind the scenes content, as well as uh, some of the CAD files and the programming and want to have an input on where future tutorials go, or even get some feedback uh, from me personally, you can consider joining and supporting the channel through memberships down below. Otherwise, best of luck out there this season. I hope that week three goes well for you. And maybe we'll see each other out on the playing field.